Hello and welcome to my garage. Today we're taking a look at a fairly straightforward job on an MGB which is a front brake pad change. The job itself is fairly straightforward and should be within the reach of most owners. Um, in terms of tools we don't need a huge amount. I've got some water pump pliers here that I'll use for sort of drawing the, drawing the pistons back. Obviously new brake pads there. We've got some uh, motor brake fluid here from Opie Oils. Uh, a new pad and clip set there and also some uh, aluminium grease that I use to put on the back of the pads in order to reduce the uh, squeal. Before I get started with removing the pads, it's worth just checking the fluid in the master cylinder reservoir. At the moment, there's a bit of space there that will allow this fluid to expand into when we push the pistons back. If it is sort of up to the top there, it's worth taking a syringe and just taking some of that fluid out. For now that should be fine, so I'm just gonna put the top back on loosely. And I will just put a bit of tissue around there to catch any spillages. So there you can see we've got the tissue in place and we can now get started on jacking up the car. I'm now going to jack the front of the car up so I can remove the front wheels. To do this I'll put the jack under the front cross member sort of towards the rear and then once the car's up in the air we'll put some axle stands on the sides. Also at this point it might be worth loosening the wheel nuts depending on what tool you're using to remove the wheels. You can just see here where I like to position the jack. It's on the rear edge of the cross member so it's well supported and now the car's up in the air we can get the axle stands underneath. So you'll be able to see here where I've put the axle stand I just get it on that chassis rail so it's a nice sort of firm point to rest the car on. We'll do the same on the other side and then we can move the jack out of the way. The car is now on axle stands both sides and well supported so we can remove the wheels. I didn't need to undo the wheel nuts first because I've got a, a gun to take them off with so we just fit this on and push the wheels off. And with the wheel out of the way we can now access the uh, brake caliper. You'll be able to see the back of the brake caliper here. What we need to do is draw out these two pins Take the spring clips off that will sort of fall off with it and then we can remove the brake pads. To remove this, the, uh, the pins it's fairly easy, it should just be a pair of pliers to lift them up and then just draw them out like so. I know some users do reuse these uh, pins again. For this video I'm going to put a brand new set in, it's probably good practice too. They are after all fairly cheap and it's probably worth ordering sort of 10 10 at a time then you can just keep them in stock and use them as required. So that's both the pins out. Now hopefully we might be able to just draw, yeah we can just draw the pad out as it is. With the pads out of the car, there are a couple of things that are worth looking into. Probably the most important is just checking that you've got a nice even wear on the pads. If you're seeing one pad is sort of worn down more than the other side, that means you've most likely got a sticking piston in the caliper. Um, you might be able to sort of free it off by working it back and forwards, but most likely you'll probably need to look at having that caliper rebuilt. So looking at these pads, we can see we've got quite a nice consistent wear across the pair of them. There's still a little bit of meat left on them. Um, unfortunately, I've got a race next weekend, which is going to be two hours. So these really need to be swapped. Before we can fit the new pads in place, we're going to need to draw the piston back a little bit. So to the, do this, I, I used a pair of water pump pliers. I just put a bit of plastic, plastic spreader on that side to make sure I don't damage the outside of the caliper housing. And then I can just give that a squeeze and hopefully because I've got the cap off the master cylinder, that should just ease back like that. Just change the pliers quickly and we'll get that fully, uh, fully open. Okay. So you can see, hopefully in there now, if I'm just going to move the camera very slightly, you can see in there we've, we've sort of pushed that piston right back to allow us to get the the new pad in. 
So we have our new Hawk Blue pad ready to go in. What I will do before I fit it is just put a little bit of a little bit of this uh, aluminium anti seize on the back of the pad. I just paint that on with a brush. It just sort of prevents it squealing. And then just a little bit on the edges here where it sort of sits inside the caliper. And then this should, should just press straight in like so. And then with that, so, oops, with that one in place, I'm just gonna squeeze the piston back on the other side so I can fit the second pad. So the same, same as before, we'll just, oops, we'll just squeeze the piston back a bit. Hopefully that's going to stay in place, that pad. Just need to open that out a tiny bit more, I can see. So same procedure as with the other side. Just a nice sort of, try and get a nice even pressure. So we've got the, the other side of the piston back, exactly the same as before. We put a little bit of the, uh, the uh, aluminium anti-seize on the back of this. A little bit on the sides. fit that hopefully yeah it's a little bit stiffer but fit that into the caliper with the brake pads in place we can now fit the little spring clips and the split pins that go through you'll see that the the clips are sort of uh, they're asymmetric so one side is longer than the other I tend to find the longer side should point towards the middle so we just put that in and then we should be able to just push the pin through by hand like so. Sometimes you may find a little tap with a hammer just to adjust those uh, pads as needed, but hopefully they should just push in by hand without too much difficulty. So let's see if we can get the bottom one in. So that's the two in, and then all we do is we get our get our pliers again, and we'll just sort of turn turn the ends down to make sure that they stay in place. So that's just like that. Just turn this one around. And there we go, and that should be the pads then installed. So you should be able to see here, the procedure is exactly the same for the other side. I've gone ahead and fitted the new uh, pads already. So with these all in place, we can put the uh, the wheels back on and drop the car back down onto its feet. So we've got the car back onto its uh, onto its feet, but there are a couple more things just to check before we take it out for the first time. First thing we want to do is have a look at this uh, master cylinder reservoir. If the fluid has gone down, you want to top that up. It's also worth pushing the brake pedal in the car just to make sure that the pads have made contact with the discs. With the brake fluid level checked, you're now ready to begin the running in procedure for the brakes. Generally, the instructions are fairly similar between manufacturers, often going to sort of 30 miles an hour, then coming to a stop several times. With the Hawk brakes, it gives you some instructions on the back of the box. It's well worth looking at these to make sure that you do it correctly. Also, do remember, the first time you use the brakes, they won't be very effective, so keep that in mind. I hope that this video might prove useful to some of you. As always, please feel free to add any comments below and also like and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Many thanks, bye.